spiritual principles of recovery, showing us how to shift our focus away from our own self-interest and toward a more spiritually centered life. As we get ready to make this decision, we talk with our sponsor, go to step meetings, and take the opportunity to share about it with other non-members. We gather as much knowledge, insight, and experience as we can from these sources, and then we make our own decision. No one can do it for us. We must consciously decide to do this for ourselves. Of course, this is not a decision we make solely with our intellect. In truth, this is a choice we make with our hearts. A decision based much more in feeling and desire than in deliberate reasoning. Though the path from mind to heart seems a difficult one, formally working this step with our sponsor seems to help us make this decision a part of who we are. The search for a God of our own understanding is one of the most important efforts we will undertake in our recovery. We have complete personal choice and freedom in how we understand our higher power. We can each find a higher power that does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Because we are powerless over our addict ion, we need a power greater than ourselves to help us. Just as our freedom to have a God of our own understanding is unlimited, so is our freedom to communicate with our higher power in whatever ways work for us. Anytime we communicate with our higher power, whether it's simply with our thoughts or aloud at the close of a meeting, we are praying. Most of us ask our higher power for direction on a daily basis. Our relationship with our higher power grows stronger as we practice faith. In our experience, talking to a power greater than ourselves works. When we are having trouble in a particular area of our lives or when we feel unable to stay clean, our higher power can help, we only need to. 16. Ask. With our prayers, we ask a power greater than ourselves to care for us. Each time we take this action, we strengthen our faith and our decision to rely on our higher power. Step 3 doesn't free us from having to take action, but it does liberate us from excessive worry about the results. If we want something a job, an education, recovery we have to make the effort to get it. Our higher power will take care of our spiritual needs, but we need to participate in our own lives. We can't simply sit back and expect God to do everything. We are responsible for our recovery. Our lives are meant to be lived. No matter how sincere our efforts at turning it over, we will make mistakes, wander off course, and experience moments of doubt. However, with each setback we are given a new opportunity to renew our commitment to live by spiritual principles. Part of the process of surrendering to God's will is to surrender to spiritual principles such as honesty, open-mindedness, willingness, trust, and faith. We try to align our actions with what we believe our higher power would want for us, and then we deal with life as it happens. We may hesitate to work step three in all areas of our lives, especially in matters we want to control. Our experience has been that we tend to hold on to certain areas. Perhaps we think, I can control my finances just fine, or, my relationship is working, why do I need to turn that over to the care of my higher power? Working step three only in certain areas of our lives short-circuits our spiritual development. 
We have found that our recovery benefits when we practice the principle of surrender, to the best of our ability, in all areas of our lives. We strive to work this step thoroughly. We begin to see positive results from the decision we have made. We begin to notice changes. While the circumstances of our lives may not change, the way we deal with those circumstances does. Because we have made the decision to allow spiritual principles to work in our lives, we may notice a sense of relief. We are being relieved of a burden we've carried far too long, the need to control everything and everyone. We begin to react differently to the situations and people around us. As we gain acceptance, we cease to struggle against life on life's terms. Striving to maintain and build on our surrender, we are better able to live and enjoy life in the moment. For some of us, Deciding to turn our will and live over to the care of the God of our understanding is a process, not an event. However, in making that decision, we do make a commitment to practice this step in our lives. When we are tempted to manipulate a situation, we recall this decision and let go. When we catch ourselves attempting to exert control over someone or something, we stop and instead ask the loving God to help us work this step. Relinquishing control is not easy, but we can do it with help. With guidance from our sponsor and daily practice, we are sure to find ourselves learning how to get our egos out of the way so our higher power can work in our lives. Each time we are fearful over a situation, we can turn to this step and find the means to walk through our fear without resorting to our old ways. Recovery doesn't exempt us from having to live through painful situations. At some point in our lives, we may have to mourn the death of a loved one or deal with the end of a relationship. When such things happen to us, we hurt, and no amount of spiritual awareness will take our pain away. We do find, however, that the caring presence of a loving power greater than ourselves will help us get through our pain clean. We may find that we are able to feel our higher power's presence in the group, in our friends, or in talking to our sponsor. By tapping into that power, we begin to trust and rely on it. We can cease questioning why painful things happen and trust that. 17. Walking through the difficult times in our lives can strengthen our recovery. We can grow in spite of our pain or, perhaps, in response to it. Recovery is a process of discovery. We learn about ourselves, and we learn how to cope with the world around us. When we are sincere in our desire to allow our higher power to care for us, we begin to gain a sense of serenity. We notice a gradual change in our thinking. Our attitudes and ideas become more positive. Our world is no longer as distorted by self-pity, denial, and resentment. We are beginning to replace those old attitudes with honesty, faith, and responsibility. As a result, we begin to see our world in a better light. Our lives are guided by our emerging integrity. Even though we make mistakes, we become more willing to take responsibility for our actions. We learn that we don't have to be perfect to live a spiritual life. When we work step free with an open mind and heart, we find the results are far beyond our expectations. As we experience this new way of life, we begin to realize that recovery is a priceless gift. We learn to trust. As we do, we open the doors to intimacy and develop new relationships. 
Where once we focused only on not using, we now can appreciate the many things that make our lives so valuable. We savor the laughter and the joy we hear expressed so abundantly in our meetings. As recovery becomes more central in our lives and we internalize the principles embodied in the steps, our view of the world changes profoundly. As our awareness grows, so does our appreciation and faith in our higher power. If we pause to reflect on our lives at this stage of our recovery, we will see that we have experienced dramatic personal growth. The relief we experience as a result of working the first three steps is only a glimpse of the growth we can experience through working the 12 steps. The role of the third step expands in our lives as we continue working the other steps. Step 11 asks us to pray for the knowledge of God's will for us and the power to carry it out. Step 3 begins this process. It is here that we start to seek God's will for us. Moving from a self-seeking life to a life based on spiritual principles requires us to change profoundly. With the help of a loving God, we are ready to move forward on our journey. This is a 12-step program, not a 3-step program. The decision we've made in the third step is perhaps the most momentous decision we'll ever make in our lives, but we need to work the rest of the steps for it to remain meaningful. There is more work to do. We have found that the spiritual path set forth in the 12 steps is the only way to recovery in Narcotics Anonymous. Putting our recovery commitment into action, we work step 4. Step 4. 18. We made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. By working the first three steps, we have formed a solid foundation for our recovery. Our active addiction cannot remain arrested, however, unless we build upon this foundation. As we work the third step, many of us were puzzled. How can we make sure we are really turning our will and lives over to the care of God? The answer is simple. We work the remainder of the steps, starting with step four. Why work the fourth step? After all, we've been able to stay clean so far. But some of us are still haunted by a driving obsession to use drugs. Others find that the feelings of discomfort are more subtle. A nagging feeling that something isn't quite right, a sense of impending doom, are feelings of fear and anger that have no apparent reason. Still others may think we're doing just fine without a fourth step. However, our experience as a fellowship has shown that, sooner or later, members who don't work this crucial step relapse. For many of us, our motivation to work the fourth step is quite simple. We're working a program of recovery and we want to continue. Because our disease involves much more than our drug use, recovery involves more than simple abstinence from drugs. The solution to our problem is a profound change in our thinking and our behavior. We need to change how we perceive the world and alter our role in it. We need to change our attitude. Whether our motivation is a desire to move away from our addiction or to move toward recovery doesn't really matter. The fourth step is a turning point in our journey of recovery. It is a time for deep personal reflection. The confusion that we attempted to mask with self-deception and drugs was about to diminish. We are embarking on a search for insight into ourselves, our feelings, our fears, our resentments, and the patterns of behavior that make up our lives. We may be very frightened at the prospect of examining ourselves so thoroughly. 
We don't know ourselves very well, and we may not be sure we want to. Our fear of the unknown may seem overwhelming at this point, but if we recall our faith and trust in our higher power, our fear can be overcome. We believe that part of God's will for us is to work the steps. We trust that the final outcome of working the fourth step will be the continued healing of our spirit, and we go on. The principles of recovery that we have already begun to practice are vital to working the fourth step. The honest acceptance of our addiction, brought with us from step one, will help us to be honest about other aspects of our addiction. We've developed a level of trust and faith in a power greater than ourselves, and that glimmer of hope we've been feeling is growing with each day clean. We pave the way to recovery with our willingness, and we find the courage necessary to work the fourth step through living these principles. Honesty is an essential part of this step. Our years of living align must end. If we sit down and become very quiet with ourselves, we will find it easier to get in touch with the truth. What we currently know to be true, we put on paper, holding nothing back. Telling the truth is a brave act, but with our faith and trust in the God of our understanding, we find the courage we need to be searching and fearless. With our courage, we are able to put on paper those things we thought we'd never tell. 19. What is meant by a searching and fearless moral inventory? We take stock of our assets and liabilities. We try to get at the bottom of who we are, to expose the lies we have told ourselves about ourselves. For years, we became whoever we needed to be to survive our addiction. After living a lifetime of lies, we began to believe those lies. Although we did discover some valuable truths in the first step, the fourth step further separates fantasy from reality. We can begin to stop being the person we have invented and find the freedom to be who we are. It's a word, moral, rather says, we have found that talking with our sponsor about our reservations can ease our discomfort. A moral inventory doesn't mean that we will condemn ourselves. In reality, the inventory process is one of the most loving things we can do for ourselves. We simply look at our instincts, our desires, our motives, our tendencies, and the compulsive routines that kept us trapped in our addiction. No matter how many days or how many years we have been clean, we are still human and subject to defects and failings. An inventory allows us to look at our basic nature with its flaws and its strengths. We look not only at our imperfections, but also at our hopes our dreams, our aspirations, and where they may have gone astray. Step 4 is a big step forward on the path of recovery. Some of us may want to write our inventory all at once, others spend some time writing each day. Any time we sit down to write, we ask our higher power for the courage and honesty we need to be thorough and to reveal what we are searching for. In most cases, we are relieved to find that once we begin, the words seem to flow naturally. We need not worry about what we are writing. Our higher power will reveal no more to us than we can handle. Most of us don't have much experience with the type of self-appraisal we are about to do, and we must have the guidance and support of our sponsor in order to understand what we're doing. Our sponsor may give us a format to follow, certain subjects or points to concentrate on, or just general guidance. Not only can our sponsor provide direction for the actual inventory, 
he or she can encourage us to be courageous, remind us to pray, and be emotionally supportive throughout this process. We often strengthen our relationship with our sponsor by relying on her or his experience at this time. Consistent action on our fourth step is important. We can't afford to delay work on our inventory. Once we begin writing, we need to continue our inventory until we are done. If we have a tendency to procrastinate, it is a good idea to set aside a certain amount of time each day to work on our inventory. Such a routine establishes our inventory as a high priority in our lives. If we put our fourth step away once we have begun, we run the risk of never returning to it. We are painstaking and detail-oriented in our inventory. We systematically examine all aspects of our lives. We begin to see and understand the truth about ourselves, our motives, and our patterns. It is important that we look at more than one dimension of our experience. What motivated us to act the way we did? What re